You're listening to the Naptime Empires podcast with my mom, Nikki Ellidge Brown. Mom, your show's on. Thanks, bud. I got it from here. Welcome to the Naptime Empires podcast, refreshingly honest conversations on the realities of parenthood and entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Nikki Ellidge Brown. Let's get started. This is my first time recording an episode since the first batch went live. And whoa, Nelly, is it fun to be published. I was secretly published for a week. I didn't actually share it publicly. I only shared it in the Naptime Empires Playground, which is our private Facebook group. If you haven't joined it yet, go to naptimeempires.com slash Facebook and I'll send you the link in an email. But oh my God! It's so exciting. We have over 20 reviews already just a week in. Again, a secret week in at that. And I'm so thankful if you do take time to leave a rating and review. It means the world because it helps me reach more people with the podcast. And I'm just kind of obsessed with the feedback so far. And what I'm finding especially fun is when you share a picture of what you're actually doing when you're listening. It's such an honor to be part of your laundry or your walk or your me time, whatever it is, or if you have me safely playing in the cup holder while you're doing a school run, like it's such an honor to be part of your life and to be in your earbuds right now. I hope you know how much of a thrill that is for me. Speaking of, this may just be a thing and I know I just need to release it because I'm sure you're not putting this pressure on me, but I've been like, ah, which one is the next one? Which one should episode four be? Because again, I have all these beautiful, refreshingly honest conversations with biz buddies of mine sitting in my Dropbox folder, ready for me to just create the intros and ship them out to you. But I just want to make sure I'm choosing the right one to share with you each week. And honestly, there isn't a wrong one ever to share. So I'm just going for it. And today I'm super excited to share this conversation with you. And if you haven't met her yet, to introduce you to my friend, the brilliant and lovely, I mean, lovely Amber McHugh. Let me read you her official bio real quick. Okay. Amber is the founder of NYSOPS, a modern business management and operations consultancy based out of Annapolis, Maryland and sometimes California, as we'll discuss in this conversation. She's the creator of several noteworthy programs and courses for busy and first-time business owners, including her signature How to Clone Yourself, the long-term hands-on program Freshly Implemented, where she acts as an outsourced COO for struggling small business owners, and CEO School, a brand new way for smart business owners to stop letting their businesses run the show and start running the show for themselves instead. Boom. I met Amber years ago. We were running in the same Facebook circles, and I just was drawn to her energy. I mean, you will be too, I think. If you like me, you're going to love Amber. She's just so smart. I could listen to her talk all day because her energy is just infectious in the best kind of way, and you'll hear that as soon as we start talking. I'm pretty sure I met her or first really connected with her through her planathon. And I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes at naptimeempires.com. Just go and search for Amber, or you can also do slash 004 because I'm going to make a pretty link for each episode. But her planathon every year it happens in November. Super cool. You got to check it out, whichever year we're in while you're listening to this. It's just great. She's a lovely human, super smart CEO, specializes in systems and just really like acting like a boss. Okay. Two businesses three kiddos, a teenager, two little ones. And in this conversation, we cover how and why she started her first business on lunchtimes and after bedtimes while working full time. So if you're still in your day job, then this is going to be extra inspiring for you. Her refreshing take on the adventures of solo parenting. Recently, her husband was around the world for six months, which I can relate to. He used to be in the military too. Dream Nanny 101 is what I'm calling that segment of the conversation on how she manifested the perfect support for her family and also just bonus tips on how she made the work from home arrangement work so that it wasn't confusing, right? When you have two grownups in the house, who do the kids go to? And then the power of a revenue plan and contingency planning, which is part of her zone of genius, balancing that with how to leave space for magic and visualizing what you want to create. 
at the end of the conversation, I mean, there's so much more we cover, but at the end of the conversation, she shared what seriously just like spoke straight to my heart. It was just a really beautiful reframe that we could all benefit from if you're judging yourself solely on your business growth. I'm going to stop talking so that you can listen to the amazing Amber McHugh. All right, Amber, thank you so much for joining the Naptime Empires podcast. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, Nikki. That's my fake radio announcer voice. I'm very excited to visit with you, as I always am. And the first thing that I want to ask is just, can you tell me more? I mean, I know, but can you tell me more about your your Naptime Empire setup and your family and how you have three kiddos, varying age ranges? Can you just kind of like lay the structure and explain what is the family dynamic over there? Yes, totally. And we've got something different going on right now because my husband, you know, I've been a single parent before and we've gone through births where he has traveled for years at a time or he's been gone for a year at a time. You know, he worked for the military and he was in the military for a period of time. But that really stopped when we had my daughter who is five. So for the last, you know, five or so years, he's been home a lot Mm -hmm. and I was loving it. And I guess I kind of forgot that I didn't like him being gone. (laughs) So I said yes to him going away on a six month project. And like, well, if you're going to be gone on a six month project, I really did not want to be in Maryland, suburbia, you know, cooped up in really the fall when it got cold as well. And so we moved out to California for six months with my sister and I had, you know, a business project to work on here as well. So it kind of worked out from that perspective. So I moved to California for six months, solo parenting, majorly downsized our house. And our next adventure is going to probably take us back to the DC, Maryland area for a little while, but then international after that. Lots of big transition happening. But right now I'm like deep in the thick of being a solo parent, primarily to my five-year-old Audrey and Harper, my two-year-old. And then you're right. I do have a third daughter, who's actually 17 now. She graduated from high school in June and she is doing a gap year before she goes to university in the fall. And she is spending the first six months of her gap year traveling and volunteering internationally as well. And then in the spring, she's hoping to get an internship somewhere here in California. So there's a lot going on. <laughs> there is. I'm glad we can capture like this moment in time. Oh. It'll be like a little, uh, family home video slash it's actually just a podcast, but right? we can break it on down. Okay. So, and you have two businesses, right? Yes. I run two businesses. Yep. So tell me how and when and where did the businesses come to be in terms of like, you started them both before Audrey was around, right? I did start them both before Audrey was around, but the, okay. uh, the consulting business, which is nice ups really was just getting really feeling like, Oh, this is, this is working when Audrey was born. Um, mm-hmm. So that gives me a time frame for everything that feels good. And so I have nice ups, which is an online consulting business. I partner with small business owners to scale and grow their businesses. So squashing the overwhelm, getting systems and structure and foundation in place. And then the other business is three boudoir. It's a photography business. And that's one where I truly practice what I preach from a consulting perspective. And we have a team of people now who are really running that business. So my business partner and I are doing marketing strategy and, you know, business management and really serving that leadership, that CEO role. And I'd say we're probably serving the CEO and president roles, you know, as well as the marketing strategy and doing a little finance and some money stuff here and there. But otherwise we've got people doing the client work, doing the photography, being on site in various cities. We're branching out in different cities this year. We were just in Maryland, DC. Now we're hitting up New York and Chicago and then Long Beach, LA is next. Wow. Lots happening there too. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. So when you started through Boudoir, how old was Lily? Good question. Maybe she was 10. I'm going to, I'm going to guess at 10. I got to do that math. Okay. So she was in school though. So she was in like, yes. yeah. okay. So mm-hmm. then how was it when you started 
like basically when Audrey came into the picture, so yeah. that's when you were pregnant with Audrey, like how did things start to shift? Because I know a lot of people, when your business comes first, yeah, then you're pregnant, then you're like, oh, okay, right. So how am I going to do this? And what's going to change? And obviously there's only so much that you can predict. So like, how was that transition for you? It's funny because at that time when I was pregnant with Audrey, I still had a full-time corporate job. Mm. So I was going through that and thinking, oh my gosh, I can't do this. How am I going to keep up? And then clearly through maternity leave, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be full time. I don't want to have this robust and this aggressive of a schedule. So that's when I really got serious about ramping things up in the business. And that was a big turning point for me. And Danielle Laporte actually said something at an event that really stood out to me. And she said, let yourself get fired. Like, if you don't want that, why are you putting so much energy into that? And I think if somebody else said something to me when I was going through my MBA program, that even your like 80% or your 70% is probably going to be pretty darn good. Mm, right. <laughs> because, right. Especially a lot of entrepreneurs, right? We're highly motivated. We're highly engaged. And that was me in my corporate environment as well. And so I scaled back a little bit and nobody really noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so made some tweaks and adjustments there. <laughs> right. Okay. So you were working like full-time corporate at an office while you were pregnant with her and running your business? Yeah. At an office. And then I was starting the business. Oh, that's a good point. I was starting the consulting business and starting through online courses and programs. Mm -hmm. And then that all changed after Audrey was born. I did more one-on-ones after Audrey was born and, and changed the business model a little bit. But then the photography business that we started a year or two before Audrey was born, mm -hmm. we were doing that. Nikki, this is a fun story. We were doing that like on our lunch break. Oh my gosh. After the kids would go to bed, I'd work. And at that time that was traveling. So the kids would go to bed. I would want something to do. Or Lily at that time, it was just one kid and she was super easy. She was like a dream kid. Yeah. She would go to bed and I'd be like, okay, this is boring. What am I going <laughs> to so it was my creative outlet, my creative project. And so my partner and I would be on Skype and I heard her clicking and I'd be clicking and we'd be working on stuff together and collaborating, even if we weren't talking, it yeah. was just to be together. Right. <laughs> and so, oh my gosh, we're going way back. So it was building that lunches and weekends, some weekend stuff, and then evenings. Mm -hmm. And that was fascinating because we grew that business to 80,000 in gross revenue as a part-time job. Mm. Wow. So that was kind of crazy. And that was really, you know, all about like, again, practicing what you preach, having systems and structure and prioritizing, like, what are your money makers? We are very clear on not doing all of the things. Mm -hmm. And that really plays into us as parents too. Like we can't do all of the things. Right. So prioritize what serves your lifestyle best, what aligns with your values best, and what's going to serve your clients and your revenue, right? Your business best. That's so good. Okay. I'm making all these notes over here. And one of the things that you said about your business, keeping you company, that's totally, I mean, for me, because Jeremy's been gone so much and honestly circling back to when I started in the first place, it was from choosing the word faith because he was about to be leaving for seven months to go live in Connecticut. And I was like, I don't want to lose all my marbles. And ultimately it did become like my business kept me company. Like exactly what you said when Bryson would be sleeping at night and I'm like, okay, what should I do? Well, there's always something I could be doing, which is good and bad, right? Because then whenever he comes back, then it's still my default mode to be just working or piddling around or doing whatever it is that I'm doing. So it's like learning how to actually coexist with the two has been an interesting thing or will be an interesting thing as he's actually home more often. So I'm glad that you said that. And that creative project and wanting to have that outlet is definitely something I've seen a lot of people who have recently had their little ones. They have their businesses. They've recently had their babies. And yes, of course, they want to have that time, but they're also finding like, oh, not that I necessarily have to go back to doing businessy things right now, but like I want to, you know, I just want to have that creative outlet. So 
Yeah. And after I had Harper, who's now two, mm-hmm. I was back online. Audrey was hard to be back online because she had some health stuff. So I literally had to hold her all day, every day while I was on maternity leave. And then Harper, it was a little bit easier because she was an easy baby. So I would check in with my clients much earlier than I planned. They're like, go, go, you're on maternity leave. Like, right. Get away from here. This right. Is fun. <laughs> and there'll be a time when I need to check out, but this, it wasn't that time. <laughs> right. Okay. So what did you put in place? You talk about maternity leave. So what did that look like for you? So with Audrey, that looked like, because I was still wrapping up the full-time job, I had short-term disability. Oh, and AFLAC. So like thinking very tangibly, I had a lot of structure in place. And actually, AFLAC was such a gift. If anybody doesn't have AFLAC or doesn't have some sort of short-term disability, that would be something I would definitely recommend looking into. And are you familiar with AFLAC? No, I'm writing it down. Well, I mean, all I think about is the duck, the commercial of the app. It's the cheesiest thing ever. And I feel a little embarrassed that we even say it. (laughs) Tell me what. Helpful because they just like, okay, you're having a baby. Here's your check. Or you get injured. Here's your check. So entrepreneurs who typically don't have short-term disability plans. And I actually made a note to myself the other day, like, oh, I need to get on that because it's even a great secondary plan for anyone who has, you know, we've got insurance coverages through my husband's Mm -hmm. insurance now, but I still, I like having some extra cushion. So I'm looking into that again myself, but Harper, so we had that short-term disability. I had a more traditional maternity leave from a corporate perspective, Mm -hmm. but with Harper, I still kept the nanny. So I spent some time with Harper so I could really love her up and Audrey would still go with the nanny. And plus the nanny had been with us at that time, you know, three years or three and a half years by the time Audrey was born Mm -hmm. that... I didn't want to sort of disrupt her flow of her income. So we planned and strategized and budgeted for that. And then how did y'all have the, like the nanny set up? I mean, one of the things I love is that she speaks Spanish so that the little ones could actually be learning that from the get go, which I think is really cool. Right. Is that the same? Yes, it was the same nanny. And we actually just parted ways with her when we moved to California. Right. Um, But we have, so our nanny, oh my gosh, she was a dream come true. We completely lucked out and we one part manifested her because we knew we wanted a Spanish speaking nanny. And she literally just walked into our house one day. She was supposed to be there cleaning and we ended up recruiting her. (laughs) We saw her and Audrey like look each other in the eyes. But then we still went through, you know, a proper interview and screening process to make sure Everything. Yes, of course she did. <laughs> but they, they basically became family and everything was really easy. I mean, I didn't give her a lot of guidelines. Certainly we had some guidelines, but it was really very flexible. And when they were with Elsa, Elsa was in charge, the nanny, they'd follow her rules. Mm-hmm. And when they were with me, you know, okay, you know, I'm in charge. And if they were around me, like say I had Harper and Audrey was around, but was going to be going to do something with Elsa. And we were all still at the house. Mm -hmm. Audrey would come and ask me something. Nope. Elsa's in charge right now. Go ask Elsa. So I'd sort of redirect that way. So it got a, you know, it could have been confusing, but I would say that it never was. I worried about it being confusing. So we had Harper and I say we, because my husband actually was very lucky. He was able to take a good bit of time off for paternity leave Mm -hmm. because he's in a government role and has more sick time, you know, than he needs. (laughs) And so he was able to use that and we were very lucky. So he stayed home and we spent that time together loving up Harper. Little Miss Lady Face. I didn't realize that you were still working in the corporate. Well, I guess, okay. I guess Audrey, if that was five years ago, wait, Oh my gosh. And Bryson's five. Okay. This is why I'm getting confused. Cause I'm like, they're the same age, but our businesses are not the same age. I'm like, wait, I didn't know you five years ago, but I keep thinking that I did because they're the same age. So I just have that parallel like baked into my brain. So how long ago did you start your business? Three and a half years. Three and a half. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Yeah. It wasn't until like April of 2013, whenever I started, I was still working part-time with the park service, but that was from home mostly. Mm-hmm. And then I had my University of Phoenix gig that was still going um, until I decided to let that go. Cause I was like, oh wait, I could actually make that in a much easier, more enjoyable way than spreading that out over 10 weeks. 
and teaching a whole lot more people at one time than 20 in a particular class. Okay, let's talk about the transition. And I know we're bouncing back and forth all up and down the timeline, but the transition from like when you were ready to leave the corporate job. So you did your traditional maternity leave. Yeah. And then when did you like cycle out of that and then just go full on into the businesses? That fall. So I was also manifesting the fall after Audrey was born. So she was born in, well, I went back to work after maternity leave, let's say June. Mm -hmm. And I was working on some projects and had some things going on. And the project I was working on was actually going away. So I sort of manifested my position being eliminated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, you know, there's a theme here. And I, I was actually walking through the halls one day and someone's like, Oh, what, you know, what's going on with you, Amber? What are you working on these days? And I said, actually, I'm soon leaving the company. And they said, Oh, please don't leave. Please don't leave. We need you on this project. So I still did a little bit. Well, I set my terms for that. And I said, well, I could help you with that, but here's what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. And it became a consulting contract gig. And that gave me a little bit of transition and cushion to go over and then start everything else full time. So, and what it looked like, it was part time. It was primarily working from home. It looked a lot better. And it just took a lot of, you know, even if it didn't change that much, because really, you know, it could have been the same as if I was full time, yeah. but it was the mindset that changed. And I had, if they said no, I had no idea what my transition plan was going to look like. I just knew <laughs> mm -hmm. I was not doing that full time thing anymore. Manifested it. Everything was going exactly as it was. From a financial perspective, my husband was probably a little bit freaked out, but I take care of most of the money stuff. Yeah. So um, he didn't have too many eyes on it. <laughs> So I was panicking a little bit, but I knew everything was happening for a reason. So I had to use your word from earlier, a lot of faith yeah. that it was all going to work out. And that was how it was. Kent grabbed me. <laughs> I will never forget Kent. And Kent's got a great vibe. He's always wearing a Hawaiian shirt. So <laughs> love it. I'll party with you anytime, Kent. Can it look like this? Yes, sir. <laughs> so funny. I also, the thing is that I really just want to pick your brain about all the systems and all the things because this is your specialty, right? With like CEO school and clone camp and all of these things is that it's so fun, which is why I love your annual planathon. It's so fun just to listen to you talk about stuff that otherwise feels overwhelming or heavy or even dry. It just never sounds that way from you. And so I'm curious because again, mom of three, and you've got a whole lot going on. Like what are some of the most valuable systems that you've had in place that have helped you keep growing your businesses, even as your family dynamics have been shifting, you know, and as y'all have been transitioning? Yes. I love that question. So even through the transition, the first thing that comes to mind for me is the budget. So if a revenue plan, businesses with a revenue plan grow 60% faster than those that don't have a revenue plan in place. So, and that's from the state of the business owner research that was done by Emith and a partner company. I may have a revenue plan. So even on a personal front, when we're going through personal transition, I'm like, I'm working the budget. When we were going through this life transition and downsizing and my husband's like, oh, we need to buy these movie boxes. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if that's in the budget or not. Let me go look. I was checking my budget more, right? So it just gave me, it, it grounded me when there's chaos everywhere else. And there's so many other unknowns that is grounding. But also it's great as you're thinking about growing your business. When you're early on in starting a business, you may not know exactly what those revenue numbers are going to be like, but you set some intentions and you do some planning and it gives you places to focus. And I think that's a big reason why, right? 60% of business, you grow 60% faster if you have a revenue plan versus if you don't, because you're getting clarity on where you need to prioritize and where you need to focus and you can eliminate some of those other things. So definitely have a revenue plan, forecast, budget in place. That's number one. That just reminded me though that we totally, I mean, seriously, I forgot. How did I forget this? That I did a call with you that I was like, okay, I like once I met you and then instantly fell in love as I'm sure most people do whenever they meet you. I was like, okay, how can we work together? Because I was about to launch a course about coffee. So it was in my first year of business and I was about to 
create it and then launch it. So we made this 90 day plan that I ended up procrastinating for the first 45 of, and then squishing it all into a 45 day plan. But by having that plan, again, even just like having that spreadsheet to look at and play with the numbers and the calculators to be like, okay, if I want to make this much, cause I had the goal of, okay, I want to make six figures. I want to hit over a hundred thousand in revenue from this launch so that means I need to sell over 50 if it's a thousand dollar course. And so just seeing it, yeah. taking all the like fuzzy wuzzy, what if, what if, but just like, no, these are the things, these are the different possible combinations that can add up to it and not getting so stuck on the how. So I'm actually curious for you, cause you're talking about manifesting too. How do you balance those two sides of you? You know, the side that wants to leave that margin for magic and not get like too bogged down in like it has to be this way or it has to come from this particular source. Like how do you balance those two sides of your brain? Okay, love that question. I use visualization a lot as a part of my manifesting process. Mm -hmm. So I have to see it. I have to feel it. I have to sort of get a sensation that I've experienced that thing that I'm manifesting. Mm -hmm. And typically, if I don't see it, feel it, if I'm not connected to it on that level, I generally don't manifest it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm sure that there are other techniques out there that I could be using it, but this has just been a pattern. And that's the way that I am successfully able to manifest. And it's proven for me. So Mm -hmm. if I, when I'm going through and working that revenue plan, I really connect with it emotionally and I connect with it intuitively as well. So it's not for me just a numbers exercise, throw them into a spreadsheet, which is weird because spreadsheets are not, you know, this feeling intuitive thing, (laughs) but I'm connecting with it and I'm seeing, okay, I see those people. If it's, you know, however many people will you work with? Or how many, you know, of your fresh start workbook do you need to sell and share with how many people to get to these revenue goals, right? What do you need to give to receive is sort of what we break that down to. And once I settle on a number that feels really good and it's all in alignment, and then I do some scenario planning as well. This is one of my other planning tips. Whatever you have planned, I always do a little bit of scenario planning, So if it doesn't quite work out as I planned, Mm -hmm. I've got like three quick, you know, scenarios, alternative scenarios in the back of my head, even with Elsa, right? I mentioned the nanny. Okay. If we don't get the Spanish speaking nanny, what are our plan B's? Like what looks good for us for alternatives? So my husband and I ran through those, you know, it didn't take a ton of time, 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And we actually took action on those other things. Like I had full faith and I fell in and out that, you know, this is going to work out. We're going to get the exact right person, AKA Elsa, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but we still interviewed people on care.com. We still set up our care.com profile and interviewed an, you know, a college student, right? We just interviewed some other people just to see what was out there and be educated and informed. And, you know, as we were setting up that profile, Elsa walked in the house. So I still take action, but I never let myself disconnect from what feels good and feels right. And I always do that scenario planning. Okay. So what does that look like scenario planning for your business? If you have, because this is, I think the thing that trips up so many of us when it comes to goal setting and planning because you want to plan. It makes you feel good to plan, but then it's also really easy to plan as your procrastination tool. And then you get stuck in there and then you have this plan that then makes you feel like, ah, you know, if this doesn't work out or should I not be planning for the contingency plans and the other scenarios, because then it means I don't really believe in it. So say you had a goal, what are your other scenarios? Yeah. I love that you raised that because I think it is just smart business to plan for the contingencies. Mm -hmm. And I know, and I hear people, and as I was starting my business, they're like, go all in, forget everything else. I'm like, that rationally is not smart to me. (laughs) I can't just do it. Like I have a family, I have babies, I have to feed them. Right. Insane. Like if I could go all in and forget about everything else in my life, no problem, no problem at all. And my husband and I, like we'd be okay if we went bankrupt, we'd be okay, you know, if we downsize, like I'm living in a very small space right now with my two girls. So we know all of those things are okay, but there are some things that I just need to stay sane (laughs) and need to be able to feed them, right? And all these things. So I can't go all the way in on no contingencies. (laughs) 
So I think that it is just smart business to build in some contingencies. Again, I don't disconnect with visualizing and manifesting and going towards my core and primary goal. Again, if it doesn't feel right, there's no way it's happening. Mm -hmm. No way it's happening. But you can't control what happens in the market. So Mm -hmm. anything can happen. Like I was selling my house last year and there's, oh, you know, or no, this year we're selling, we're working on selling our house. I'm like, the traffic is a little slow right now. What's that all about? Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh yeah, this election season's a little funny. Oh, great. Like, what a plan for Trump and Hillary. Those are the contingencies you want to, like, there are things that could happen that you have no idea. So I'm not saying you have to think of every possible scenario. That's why I'm saying only 10 to 15 minutes on this, but all right. And I go through this every year too. We're getting ready to go through the 2017 planathon, mm-hmm. which I'm so excited about. And after that, we invite people into a program and I've got goals and I'm like, okay, this is how many people I see myself working with. This is how many people I want to work with. And then I think, okay, but what if only 10 people decide to work with me this year? How mm-hmm. does that feel? Is that okay? What mm-hmm. if 30 people, you know, 20 people? Yep. Yep. That's okay too, because I will be really happy serving those people. So mentally I run myself through, you know, I guess you could call it a worst case scenario, but that doesn't really feel worse to me because I'd be again, really happy serving those 10 to 20 to 30 people. And the other thing this does, Nikki, a positive psychology research shows that when you envision the worst case scenario, you're actually happier. Like it doesn't happen Mm. or it does happen. And oh, you've already worked out the, you've already thought through and worked out the solution and you've kind of already felt that pain. (laughs) Ah. You're feeling happier. So it all just kind of works out. That's so interesting. And then it can take the sting out. And also from the manifesting perspective, it helps you detach from the outcome because you know that like you're going to be okay regardless, which reminds me this time last year, or about a month ago, a year ago, when Jeremy was just about to be coming back from deployment and he had just made chief and they were talking about orders and things. And there was like, just for a brief moment in time, talk about moving us to Guam for three years. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Cause we were planning on getting out. I'm like, wait, wait, what are you talking about? That is the wrong direction. You know, and I was like <laughs> fighting it with everything that I had in my mind. Like I was barely able to communicate with him via email. So it wasn't like I was really actually fighting it anywhere besides just like, no, 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 I'm not. And I'm sure that Guam is a lovely place. Actually, I know it is because I have so many people I know through the Navy who have been there and who loved it. But for me, knowing that we were getting out, I was like, no, this is the wrong direction. And so instead of freaking out about that, I was like, okay, let me focus on how I want to feel, which is connected and support it, you know, because basically my thing was like, that's way too far away from family. Like an eight hour flight is far enough. I don't want to go any further than that. I was like, they're not going to want to stop in Hawaii and only be halfway there to come visit us and then keep going. So then focusing on that just helped me kind of like talk myself off the ledge of panic and then be like, all right, okay. And then finally coming to a point where I could be like, all right, we would make the best of it. We would find ways to feel supported. If that was what we needed to do, we would rise to the occasion. We would bloom where we're planted, blah, 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 blah. So I could see how that could totally work. Yes. Good turnaround there. Thank you. It took some, took some help <laughs> took talking it through to a few people to be like, Nikki, what you resist persists and you are totally resisting it. So cut it out. <laughs> and that's, I think, working, having a husband who has worked for the government, worked with the military for quite a while. I'm like there is no control. Like he comes home, he says, oh, we're going here. I'm like, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to believe it when I see some orders. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. like he's got Africa on the mind right now. I'm like, all right, I'm going to roll with that. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's so much and there's a huge lesson in there too about like worrying is like praying for what you don't want. Yes. It's just wasted energy. It's so easy to do, but it's seriously not doing anything. And moms of all people are really, really good at that. So okay. nuggets make it easy. <laughs> all right. Let's tie back and bounce back to the nap time piece. And let's talk about, because you do, I mean, you have so many systems and hiring, like even again, just hearing about your process, whereas for me, our first babysitter who is amazing and lovely, but basically I just met her through her brother-in-law who happened to be our Terminix guy. Like there was no process. There was no process. So 
you have great processes for everything. What are some other processes that have been helpful to you and systems that have been helpful to you as you've been, especially in the last five years, as you've had the two little ladies around, like, and you've been growing your business significantly, like what are the things that you're like, I can't imagine growing without having these things in place to keep my sanity in check? The one thing I keep looking at right now is I cannot imagine not having something to put up on the wall and see my goals, see my action items, see the milestones that I'm working towards on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I use craft paper because I don't have a whiteboard and we're moving around. I didn't want, you know, I didn't want anything big, but I just have craft paper from Target rolled out on the wall with push pins in there and we Sharpie and it, it's our decorative thing. And I've been looking at the whole time we've been talking like, yep, that's my plan. Got to get on that. (laughs) How's it feel? Is it all good? Like I'm I'm checking everything I'm saying. (laughs) So funny. So definitely writing things down, documenting them. You know, when we've got so much in our heads as moms, as business owners, that letting it get out of our head, that does two things. Number one, you know, we can clear some space in our head for other stuff because we do only have so much capacity up there. Mm -hmm. And that also gives space for other people to help us when we're ready to hand some of those things on. So if we can get it on paper and we can get it to a project management tool or an email or a spreadsheet, that will accelerate. And honestly, I just took a picture of those plans on my wall and sent them to the people that were going to help me. Mm. So they can literally get on board and on the same page of craft paper. Literally. Yes. (laughs) Okay. So that's okay. Another huge thing that I still am dealing with, and I'm in a really weird biz puberty phase right now. I mean, if I ever thought I was in biz puberty before, I really am now because I'm in such a weird transition because I don't really know where Naptime Empires is going or if it's going to be my thing or if it's just going to be this podcast. And then we'll see. I mean, I have no idea what's on the other side of it yet, but I know the value in having things documented, for example. And to me, part of me is like, okay, I still don't have that elusive systems manual, you know, where it's like one place. And we did, we put a whole bunch of stuff into a Google doc, but to be honest, that overwhelms me because it's a really long Google doc. And I'm like, what if somebody accidentally hits select all and deletes it? And then, I mean, you have a backup and everything, but like, I'm just thinking, what are the most important, most valuable when people are starting to actually document things and to be able to pass things off to other people, like what are those lowest common denominator systems that everybody should have in place, you know, or that it could in theory make it easier. Definitely. And I'm going to tell you, Nikki, I'm raving about Google sites right now. Mm -hmm. I had all my stuff in Google Docs before as well. And I used the table of contents and that was really handy down the left-hand side. And there was version control. So, you know, if something got deleted, we'd just pop back to the last version. Right. But Google sites has been dreamy. Mm -hmm. We've got our three boudoir business set up in Google sites. So that might be something to check out if you're feeling overwhelmed in Google Docs. Okay. And we will link that up in the show notes. So that's like a wiki or it used to be called a wiki, but now they call it Google sites. Yeah. Google sites. And you can make it look very much like a website as much as you want. Mine is super simple. It's just drop downs on the left, Mm -hmm. like an old school classic website. And yeah, then I drop content into the core part. But what's nice about that is that everything integrates with Google Docs. Mm, So you've got stuff, you know, in there, which I'm all Google Docs. I don't really use Dropbox very much. So you can pull everything in super super easily. But okay, core systems, money systems, definitely money systems, including how do you sell? So anything that touches your prospects to get them to work with you in a seamless fashion, to get them onboarded in a seamless fashion, to make that whole process click. You know, a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs aren't as comfortable with selling. So if you can get that process refined on the front end and you can systematize it and take the thinking and the feeling and the emotion out of it to some extent, like the hesitation will go away because, Hey, we've got a system. We're going to implement this system. So I think if you can get that done, plus I love onboarding because after someone has decided to work with you, like let's wow them, wow them right away. And then I'll take that all the way through to the end, you know, in the client management process, they're all, and this goes, if you're doing a course or if you've got an automated process, or if you've got a high touch one-on-one offering. Mm -hmm. So all this applies regardless of what you're doing, but all the way through to the process when they're getting their services or when they're going through your course to the end, you know, then some follow-up and some wrap-up at the end as well always feels good. And again, those can 
all be systematized and I'll follow through on that money stuff, you know, checking in with your money regularly. You know, it's a good thing and a good habit to get into as a business owner. And especially for us as women, I mean, that's something that we don't have a lot of people in general don't have a lot of comfort with it. And then women are even less inclined to be comfortable with money. So I definitely think that's something that we would all benefit from tackling. And as I say that, I'm like, oh, I got to get on some bills right now. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's so good. Because I actually have someone who's waiting on an order. She's like, I'm trying to pay you right now. And I'm like, right, okay. Because I've got my course about copy system down. But in terms of actual one-on-ones, it's I'm rusty. I haven't done it in a while. So we're going to help her um, figure out yes. what's going on with the order form today. But I also just love what you said about like, let's wow them. And it's so fun to think that way. And it's so easy not to, because you're just like going through the motions and getting things done. Blah, blah, blah. Like it's so fun to stop and zoom out and think, what could I do that would just totally delight and surprise my customer, not in a place that's like from over delivering and you're pouring out and blah, 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 you know, like giving too much and, and running yourself empty, but like wowing them in a way that feels so good for you and for them. For me, that used to be sending audio welcome notes to every new member of A Course About Copy and just surprising them. They were not expecting it. It was not like a recording. It was like me saying, you know, hey, Amber, it's Nikki. I just wanted to say I'm so excited that you joined the Course About Copy family. And they loved that. And it was so simple. And I loved it too because I knew that they would love it too. And of all the people who replied, they were like, oh my gosh, that was so unexpected. Then I got horribly behind and have major resistance to going back and trying to like catch up on like 100, 200 audio notes. But I still am going to because energetically it doesn't feel complete. Maybe there's something to tap on around that. Just simple, simple things can be so fun to just take a break and wow. So simple. And it really differentiates your brand too. Like I worked with one client who she was a web designer and we were talking through her client experience. Cause I think systems ultimately become your client experience and your team experience. Mm. And she was talking about how she meditates for every one of her client projects. I'm like, well, that's really unique. Do you tell them that? Like what comes up from that? And she walked me through the process and like, you've got some opportunities in there to bring that into your work. So there might be something that you're doing that you're not telling people about that's a little bit unique or differentiates you. So you can tie it into your brand too, which really gives you a unique opportunity. I love that. Okay. That really is the most important system because that's, I mean, how you sell is how you actually have a business and actually delivering on that. And if you nail that one system and you get that going and you're doing it well, then the rest basically takes care of itself and you document the rest as you go. Exactly. Yes. And everything else can build from there. Okay. Well, another piece that you are, you know, a specialist in is this cloning yourself business. And I've joked before in my lower, less productive times of life, I'm like, well, I don't want to clone myself. I don't want more of me because zero times zero is still zero. So if I'm not getting anything done, I don't necessarily want to clone myself. But in my better days, absolutely. And this is something that a lot of us just have to realize is we can't do it all. It's not like that's Captain Obvious, but sometimes you just need people to remind you, like, don't be a hero. It's okay to get help, whether that's with childcare, with your business or with both. So what are some of the biggest things that you've learned and you've seen and the people that you've, I mean, in your own businesses, but then also the CEOs that you're working with that are like some of the bigger blocks around getting the help that they actually need? Yes. There are so many common themes that come up over and over again. And these probably permeate in other areas of our business as well, but it has to be me. I'm the only one that can do this. No one else can do this as good as I can, or I need to find someone who could do this as good as I can. And you're so spot on. We don't want someone that could do it as good as you can. We want someone that could do the things you don't want to do or that you're bad at better. Better. (laughs) And so cloning is just a cheeky way to talk about it, but we want to, we want partners in crime. We want people you can collaborate with because you want to be able to step it up. And if we've got a bunch of mini us's running around, like we want more of you in the world in your unique way, but the powerhouse team behind you and around you, we want to complement each other's skill sets. The other thing that comes up a lot is money, right? How I can't, when I get to a certain level or when I spend, you know, when I'm finally making money, then I will hire someone to help me. Mm. And oftentimes 
like you can carve out something to invest, right? And the first thing I outsourced was for $20 a week, actually probably $21 a week. I was outsourcing to someone on Odesk, now Upwork, to get my blog post up and then out on social media channels and loaded into email. And we had a highly systematized process for that, of course. And once that was up and going, I could way trim down my time because I was just farting around in WordPress. I didn't mm-hmm. have to do that. And then on the MailChimp and whatever, everything else I had to go into and I was being so nitpicky, but she got in there, she got it done. It took her three hours, saved me probably five hours because like I said, I was farting around yeah. and I could get back to doing what I needed to do, which was connecting with people who wanted my services. And I started generating revenue. Mm. Bingo. And then I got the flywheel turning. So I definitely recommend if there's something you could outsource to someone who could do it better than you can, or if it's sucking your energy, share that. And then if there's something you are avoiding doing, triple D's, delete it, delegate, or do it. So delete it, right? If, if it's been sitting around on your to-do list and you keep forwarding it week after week after week, ask yourself, does it really need to be done? Or just decide like, yeah, it really needs to be done and I'm the one that needs to do it and I need to do it right now. Or, okay, this is something I should outsource because I'm really never going to do it. It kind of needs to be done. And so if there are things you're procrastinating getting to, how can you get some help so that you can get to those things or just take them off your to-do list? And again, clear some space for yourself because there's plenty to do, whether it's get out there and enjoy life a little bit more or, you know, clear some space for business. Right. Okay. So then for the objection of, but it takes so much longer for me to actually like, you know, if I hire someone from Upwork, for example, which again, we'll link to in the show notes, if I hire someone, but I don't really know them and then I have to show them how I'm doing what I'm doing, it's just going to take longer than if I would just do it myself. Okay. Good question. So if you document your systems or your processes, and there are several different ways that you could do this, first of all, that will not be true. But second, where you do have to do some more hands-on training because it's more complex or you need to communicate brand and values and some more nuanced things, Short-term pain, long-term gain. Like if you look at like, oh, it's going to take me longer this week. Yeah, it might take you longer this week. But over the coming years, and I'm thinking about your business long-term. We are not going for one-hit wonders here. Yes, yeah. Let's look at the long-term sustainability of your business. It is absolutely not going to take you more time over the lifetime. So, but systemization in that blog post process that we documented, it took... You know, it took me maybe an hour to really go through and look at every step of the process and make sure it was all really well documented. But I handed it off to this virtual assistant and she said, oh my gosh, I'm never going to mess this up. This is so well detailed. And she didn't unless I messed it up. Mm. (laughs) Unless I didn't give it to her on the right time or I put it, you know, the wrong something, something. And it always comes back to that human error, that human element. But she knew what she was doing. I hired right and... I hired someone who knew what they were doing and she rocked it out. Okay. So how can you, whenever you're like, what is the best practice, I guess? And it may just be different for everyone or maybe it really isn't. And there's a pretty straightforward way to do it when it comes to documenting the things that you're doing. Like, how do you recommend to people who are just starting out to document things so that they can pass them along? Like, is it, well, as you're doing that on any given day, or do you take one day at a time and you're like, okay, Today is going to be a day where as you go through, you're going to document everything and maybe just take like one day a week where you actually document whatever you do that day. Or do you go by like topic area of today? I'm going to, you know what I mean? Yeah, I would definitely prioritize. So if you've got all the time in the world, you could take it sort of day by day. But if you are, you, if you have a lot of, we definitely time, don't, right? Has yeah, it? exactly. So I'm like, nah. yeah. <laughs> so, but if you've got a lot on your plate, mom, yeah. <laughs> prioritize. So like we said, what isn't getting done? What's sucking your energy? What are you going to outsource first? Or what do you just need to be more efficient at personally? Like systematize those things first. Like I didn't go document my money process first because I needed to get this blog post process off my plate first. So that's what I documented first. That was the first process we ever had in my nice apps business. Mm -hmm. And I would also recommend including a template. So you might have a process and there are some core things that we include in our systems documentation. 
So basically it's who, what, where, when, why, you know, what are all of the pieces of a system? Who needs to do it? When's it going to be done? And the when might not be a date or a time, but it might be a trigger. Like when this email comes in from a customer, we Mm -hmm. do this. Why do we need to do this? I really firmly believe in giving context so you can empower people and not just have someone, you know, check, check, check. Who, what, where, when, uh, where, where do they need to go to do it? WordPress. MailChimp, Infusionsoft, et cetera. And then who's doing it? So I'm going to give you the content. You're going to do these next, you know, et cetera steps. And then after you have the step-by-step documented, and in this instance, she knew WordPress well enough that I didn't need to go through and say, click on this WordPress button. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was exactly what I wanted to get away from. Yeah. I could, over time, I did create that because we shifted and had someone else on the team do it. And we did a video, and then that person actually documented the steps. So there are a couple of different ways you can actually get that process documented. So again, you could create a video. I do not recommend leaving it at a video though, because when you go to implement something, if you have to click through and watch a video, okay, pause. No, fast forward to the two minute mark. That's so annoying. Ultimately, I definitely recommend getting it documented and then highly, highly, highly recommend templates. So fill in the blank. So every week you're basically filling in the same information for a blog post press, you know, blog post, you need a title, you might need a subtitle, you need your SEO, right? What are all of those things that you need? You need an image, have a template so you don't miss anything. And then nobody misses anything. They don't miss anything when they're populating it. You don't miss anything. And it becomes, you know, a little bit turnkey to the extent that it can be. Clearly there's going to be a lot of new thought leadership every week, but the going through the motions part Anything that's going through the motions that we do more than three times, I'd say systematize that sucker. Yeah. And that can be used for so many things, even like lunch, making lunches for school oh, for the next day. Yeah. And yes, I, clothes and all that kind of goodness. When you're do. teaching little people how to do things for themselves, like this yes. is the checklist. Okay, Bryson, you need to have your jammies ready before we get in the bath so that you're not cold when you're getting out. I love that. And we have a, ch- I love that you mentioned that because we have a check checklist for Audrey. We haven't made one for Harper yet now, but it was the bedtime routine. You know, don't forget, brush your teeth, put on your pajamas, wash your face, you know, all the things. And we were just talking about the re-entry too, like with husbands coming home after being gone. And I'm like, right. Okay. Last night I literally said, I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to have to write this checklist down (laughs) just so that you have it too. So that we do, we have this consistent, no matter which parent is overseeing the bath time routine, Bryson gets the same, you know, as opposed to like, if he has an opportunity for freestyling, then you can tell, oh, here we go. Now we're going to add 20 minutes to bedtime because he can see that he could be a little crazy right now. You're so kind. That's like, good luck, honey. I'm going to the coffee shop. Yep. 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 Daddy does bath time and we've got to systemize that. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Okay. So, I mean, I could just... I could listen to you talk forever, which is, again, why I love the Planetathon, and I will totally link to that, whether, I, I, again, I don't even know when I'm releasing all of these episodes, but for you listening, you've got to check out the Planetathon because there's so many great videos, I mean, from not just this year, I'm sure, as they're coming up, but like, it's just simple stuff that it's refreshing to think about. I don't know, listening to you, Amber, just gives me hope for things being organized, but still in a way that feels like in alignment and not like it's sucking the fun out of it, you know, and that you can still be organized and systemized and still have wiggle room for making sure that it feels right for you. So a hundred percent. And I, when people say, Oh, you're organized. I'm like, well, yeah, I am. But if you looked around my apartment right now, like, Oh boy, you'd be like, what is that pile doing there? McHugh? <laughs> I thought you were organized. <laughs> Like, cause life happens. Like we had a busy weekend. I haven't put the clothes away yet, yeah. but what the systems do, they really help you like sit down and focus and knock out the important things. And I can kind of ignore that because oh, I've got to do this thing right here. It helps separate a little bit more. It helps bring focus and clarity to what needs to get done. It happens faster. It's so much more efficient. And we don't have time for the nonsense. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's exactly what we all need is that efficiency to be able to get done what actually matters. Yeah. It's very easy otherwise to just, if you have no focus, which has been a huge part of me, 2016, has been a lack of focus and clarity. 
just having that like spark of energy to be like, okay, prioritizing. I mean, just going back to what you were saying about what is the revenue generating, what's going to be highest value for me and for my customers and clients that I can do right now. And then what else can I, what did you say? Do delete or delegate those? Yes. Do delete or delegate. And I will say like this year for me, I was speaking with Carrie earlier this week and she, or, or last Friday, it's Monday. Oh my gosh. And she was like, Oh, what did you, how's your year been? And I'm like, well, I'm probably going to have flat growth, but from a life perspective, it's been amazing. Mm. So, and that ma- that's what it's all about for me. Like, yeah, all this business stuff, super important and systems, super important because they help me live my life. They help me serve my clients. They help me do all of these things that I want to do a little bit better, a little bit faster so that I can clone myself, right? That's not just about the people, but that's again about you, you know, us get more of you, Nikki. Mm. I love you. <laughs> love you. I love you. And I love so much what you just said, because that really just resonates deep inside my soul. I'm so glad that you said that. Uh, it's about living your life and it's so easy to then just wrap it all up in, in the spreadsheets and the numbers and think that that's what matters because it's harder to measure like your life satisfaction, but that's ultimately, hello, what it's all about. Right. Yeah. And it feels, and you can just feel it, you know, when things are on and things are off and that's why reflection is another, oh, it's such an important process. And I have to remind myself to do it. Do you have a good journaling or reflection process? No, I have squillions of journals at any given time. I have little notebooks where I'm writing random things. I have a whole basket of notebooks that I'm like, one of these days I'm actually going to go through and see, because there's all kinds of lovely things hiding in there, but I have no idea. I had to do that when we downsized and moved out here too. I'd be like, okay, you're not bringing all of these notebooks and you're definitely not putting them in storage. Right. Clean it up. But I really have to remind myself to pause and reflect so I can, you know, are you satisfied right now? Is this going right? Is this going well? Are you on track? Are you working towards your goals? Constantly doing not just the spreadsheet check-in, but that yeah. sort of life, personal, a solitative piece for sure. Yes. Cause otherwise, you know, it doesn't matter. Right. None of that does matter unless you can check in with yourself and think about that. And again, it's bizarrely easy not to do that. Oh, so easy. I avoid it so bad. All right, friend, where can we find you? Again, I'll put everything in the show notes. So don't you worry about that. You can come on over to naptimeempires.com and find all of these links. But where can we find you, Amber, online? You can find me at niceops.com, N-I-C-E-O-P-S.com. And I would love if anybody's got any questions, I'm so happy to help. All right, cool. Thank you so much for sharing this. And I have a feeling I'm like, again, I'm having all these initial conversations. I'm like, well, I can already think of a whole nother conversation I can have with every person that I've already had. So anyway, thank you. We will have our next conversation offline, but I know this one is going to be super valuable to our buddy listening right now. So I appreciate you. Thank you for doing what you do. And we'll talk again soon. Love it. Thanks, Nikki. Bye, friend. This show may be over, but the conversation is just beginning. Head on over to naptimeempires.com slash Facebook so you can join my free, wait, did I say free? I meant priceless, rapidly growing community of Naptime Empire Builders for deeper discussions, behind the scenes scoop, and of course, updates whenever I've got new stuff coming up for you. Naptimeempires.com slash Facebook. See you there. See you next time. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 